Living in Japan is not always that easy. In today's video, I will share my story about how Japan has many bureaucratic rules and how the Japanese bureaucrats and officials many times just blindly follow the rules that can really undermine any proactive action or efficiency. Moreover, this is also because I'm an American and sometimes I attempt to think five steps ahead to try and avoid problems. But most of the time, these attempts are destined to fail. Trying to outmaneuver the Japanese bureaucracy system and trying to negotiate with the checking the box mentality is similar to trying to beat the house in Las Vegas. The house always wins. So let's get to it. Hi, I'm Mike Matsuno, the man in Japan. On my channel, I talk about daily life in Japan. If you like the stories and commentary, please hit that like button and subscribe. I've lived in Japan for about 25 years total and love Japan, the people, the culture, and most things considered Japanese-y. But there are certain times and situations that really annoy or frustrate me. The coronavirus and vaccine situation in Japan is an ongoing crisis today but in today's video, I will not be talking directly about the coronavirus, but this story happened due to the coronavirus situation here in Japan. I will also share with you some of the video that was taken back in December 2020 when this situation was ongoing. Well, this year, because of the coronavirus, I haven't been back since last uh, Christmas, uh, December. And then so I haven't gone back. So I've had to have some medication sent and that always gets stuck, caught in customs. And it, it took me a while to figure it out, but I've been doing that for about two, three years. So I kind of have the paperwork down and it takes a little longer, but it's, it's not that big a problem. Well, this time I'm old. So I use um, a CPAP mask. It has like a, you know, has a machine like this, right? It's, there's a tube that's attached to the machine. And basically this goes around your head like this right and uh, and, and this, this is a nose pad I know it's not romantic or anything but cannot help when you get old well what happened was this headband you know which is a little stretchy material it broke and you can see I use tape and a staples actually and what happened was the plastic piece started protruding through here and started poking me you know I try to use staples and try to make it tighter because the elast elasticity you know was gone so in the previous seven years prior to COVID-19 I used to return to Hawaii three to four times a year to help take care of my parents who were in care homes in Honolulu and so whenever I needed something from the United States like medication or certain specific items that I could only get from the US I would order it online from Japan and have it sent to my sister Susan's home and then I would return to Honolulu get it from her and bring it back to Japan. So I needed to have a new nose pad sent to me here in Japan, but I didn't want to bother my sister and brother-in-law, Patrick, to receive the order from the company and then repack the items and then ship it to me here in Japan. So I tried to order it directly from CPAP.com and have them send it directly to me here. They do ship to Japan and so I placed the order, but the nose pad company called ResMed for whatever reason was not allowed to ship to Japan. So then I had to have it shipped to my brother-in-law Patrick in Honolulu and asked him to repack and ship it to me. And I'm thinking, okay, this is for personal use, so it shouldn't be a problem. It's not like a machine, it's not medication, so it should not get caught up in customs. But sure enough, I get a notice, that red postcard that says that it's in customs and I need to contact them. So I email them because I had the email address from doing the medication before and, and asked them and I said, What's the problem? You know, because this is just for my private use. I sent them a photo of it. I showed them what was broken. And I had a couple more of these headbands, extra headbands sent. So it was this piece, a couple of headbands, uh, small black sponge filters and white filters. That's all. So I contacted Osaka Customs, who then referred me to the government's section of medicinal inspection and guidance under the Ministry of Health and Welfare, which is the section working under customs to check and inspect any incoming medications. I emailed them that this was not any kind of medication, just a nose pad tube for the CPAP mask, and that I needed it quickly. So could they just approve and release the nose pad from customs? And they said no sorry it's a medical device you need to do the paperwork so i said okay what's the paperwork so 
it was basically the same as for the medication except for the pharmaceutical part. So I filled it all in and then I sent it in and they said, and you have to send like the inventory of what you purchased and uh, um, the doctor's note. So I had the inventory from CPAP mask, which was easy to print off and I could fill out the form, but I didn't have a doctor's note because I've been using this machine for the last seven years. And the last time I went to a doctor was what? Yeah, five years ago. The do and seven years ago is when I first went for a test and they said that I have moderate sleep apnea, so I should use this machine. And you know, it's kind of a hassle and I don't really even know if it's working or not. But according to the doctor, his name was Dr. Shibano. He said that at least three or four hours a night you should use it because if not, it kind of like shocks your heart. Every time you do that, like that sleep apnea noise, that it could shock your heart and you could get a stroke or, or a heart attack. So I started using it and I bought this one. It was smaller at that time because it was for traveling. I traveled all over the world with this, you know, all over the world. Never had any problem with anyone in stopping it or, you know, or taking it or anything. But I always usually would have a note. Anyway, they wanted like a note or something. And I said, you know what? The last time I saw the doctor was five years ago. This is sleep apnea. It's not like a, an illness that you have to keep going back to get or update your prescription. You know, as long as the doctor said, as long as it's working, you know, this is like um, an automatic adjust itself. He said, that's fine. You don't have to come back. So I told them and I wrote them and they said, nope. It's a medical device. But they would not budge, nor did they show any signs of flexibility. They simply said, I needed to get a doctor's note or prescription that I have sleep apnea. Seven years ago, I had taken the sleep apnea test for the first time and was diagnosed by a Dr. Shibano to have moderate sleep apnea. That is when he issued the original prescription or doctor's note in English. Soon after I did the sleep apnea test, Dr. Shibano left that hospital and moved to another hospital. But he said that I would not have to come back to see a sleep apnea doctor unless there was a problem. I did take another sleep apnea test about five years ago, but I had not seen any sleep apnea doctor since then. But knowing the Japan system, I thought that if I went to ask for a copy of the five-year-old prescription, they would probably tell me that I would have to go to the sleep apnea section and consult with a new sleep apnea doctor. Huge, huge fiasco. Um, I would have to go down there probably, and I probably would have to get checked. And, and since it's five years, they might not even have the record or they wouldn't give me a copy probably. And I probably would have to do another sleep apnea test, which costs about I think it's about a thousand US dollars and then you pay 30% so $300. I mean, all I need is this piece. All I need is this, you know, or even just this part if I could change it. I, you know, I didn't know until later that this is all I needed. You know, I could still change this and use this piece, right? Because it's plastic. I didn't want to go through a whole nother um, test and it was going to take a lot of time. Uh, now that I'm working, um, teaching at Kindai, there's no way I could get off until after the contract ends, which is after December 23rd. And I didn't know if customs would hold it that long. They might ship it back. Anyway, I wrote to him. I said, please, is there any way that I said, it's five years ago. I said, I said, I might have it somewhere, but uh, the, the doctor's note, but that was five years ago. You know, it wouldn't be good. And they wrote back and, and they basically said, no, you need a doctor's note. And even if it's five years before, it's okay. So I'm going, what the heck man so basically it's you know it's the check the box mentality like the rule is set there's no flexible thinking and of course i usually would never have it sent to me here in japan because i had always done everything possible to avoid having to deal with customs so i wouldn't have to deal with situations like this if you like the content and story, please hit that like button and subscribe. There was no regard to common sense or to rethink if my inquiry maybe had a point. They just needed that doctor's note or prescription so they could check the box. At first I thought it had to do with protecting Japan's maybe CPAP mass industry so they did not allow any of the competitors product into Japan. But then I realized the section of medicinal inspection and guidance office does not handle customs and imports. Their job is simply to inspect any pharmaceutical related shipments for verification and legality. So their office being so strict had nothing to do with importing or bringing in this nose pad. So I had no choice to try and find the seven year old prescription from Dr. Shibano in my apartment. So I started looking. Fortunately, the other day, about two weeks ago, when I was looking for um, some documents for the medication time, which is separate, 
I actually ran into a photo that looked like it might have had it. And so I quickly looked through everything, you know, went through all, everything. And then I found it. I was shocked. Dr. Shibano had given me a paper. And I think it was so when I traveled around, I could show it to anyone who, you know, like at that time we were worried about TSA or being stopped at the um you know the hand carry because i used to always hand carry it before and then they would stop and say what is this you know they think it's some kind of you know weapon or a bomb or something so anyway i had that paper i never had to use it but i had that paper and inside that same folder was another sleep apnea test i didn't even realize in 2015 i took another one at that new hospital that he had moved to but he wasn't in charge of the sleep apnea part it took about a month from when i first received the red lettered postcard from customs that they had my package and to contact them to finally having it released to me here in kyoto so anyway it came i went to pick it up finally you know this is the box that patrick my brother-in-law sent I, it must say something about it's been opened by customs, you know, because it looks, uh, and it's all sealed. And the guy had to, had all these forms that I had to sign two or three places. And then he charged me a thousand yen. And I, and I was looking at the receipt, you know, and it's, I don't know what it's for. It's, I think it's for um, tax. The actual contents in here for the filters, the headband, and then the, um, the nose pad piece. And this is expensive, like a hundred dollars. So anyway, I guess it's 800 yen, it says I was charged. So somehow I was taxed, you know, 800 yen or maybe it was duty, you know, and another 200 yen made for handling. But, you know, normally in medication, when they send it, they don't, they don't charge me. But this was something a little different. To me, it made no sense that something that's for personal use, that's not any kind of um, machine or medication should be able to just be sent through. But because it falls under the so-called medical device in Japan, sometimes they're just rule followers, you know, just, and, and again, it's like check the box mentality. Think about it, five-year-old prescription, that normally would not be good at all if really they needed a prescription. But all they wanted to do was have it so they could check the box, no matter what doctor it's from or for whatever, just to say that I had sleep apnea. That's all they really needed to no, that's what they said. They said that, that, that you have sleep apnea. I said, even if I didn't have sleep apnea and I, and, and I ordered this, what's the problem? You know, I could pay duty if they want, but what's the problem if I ordered this? Or what if I wanted to give it to my friend? Or, you know, like, hey, Merry Christmas. You know? And then I also asked them, okay, there's these, um, just the headbands that I thought I could just switch it for until I go through the process. Maybe I had to go to the hospital and do a sleep apnea test again. I didn't know if they could just send me these and then hold the rest. And they said, no, we can send you the headbands, but we would have to destroy the rest of the items, which means like the most expensive thing would be thrown out. <laughs> Crazy. I can't believe how I knew it was going to be a problem if it got stuck. So I was just hoping you know, my brother-in-law, he packed it in here and I don't know what he wrote me. Oh, it's written medical. So it was, it was written medical. So right away, bang. So maybe you, you, you shouldn't write medical. You just write um, toy, <laughs> toy for little kids or um, decoration. Looks like a little, one of those blow up, you know, like um, fuzzy, like what do you call those, those blow up things in America? They, they fill it with air and they move around like that. Kind of looks like that. <laughs> So I'm opening it right now, just to, just to show what, so yeah, here is the resume. Now this company wasn't allowed to export to Japan for whatever reason. Japan was, so that's why the company couldn't send it directly to me. And it was going to cost about $60 just to ship that small box. But at that time, I didn't want to bother anybody. So I said, fine. But it didn't work. So it was sent to my brother-in-law who probably paid $36.45. So even that it's, not that, it's not cheap just for that small little thing. I heard the mailing between Japan and America are, are some of the most expensive. In, uh, it's the most expensive in the world for the distance. So it was only this. The filters, the white filters. There's two filters, white and black. This is reusable. This is thrown away. And I ordered three headbands like this. 
they could see, I mean, you know, this is not something that you would stop for medical reasons, you know. It was mainly this, you know, that they stopped it for, but maybe it does look kind of like something really like, wow, it's some special medical device. But, I mean, you know, you can't use it alone. You can't, you know, like, like you can't use it as a snorkel. Actually, you know what? You actually could use it as a snorkel. Maybe I should have Patrick send it to me next time and said, it's a snorkel with a headband. You know, put the headband on and go. Even before when I had to deal with these two offices in the past, when I had to have medication sent from the United States to me here in Japan, after I got the section of medicinal inspection and guidance to approve my shipment, they would send to me the approved form as a PDF file. I would then send that PDF file to the Osaka Customs so they would release my package. However, Osaka Customs then wrote me back and said that they cannot open and read PDF files to please send a Word file. So then I asked the first inspection office if they could just send the form, their PDF form in Word, to the Osaka Customs. That was the other problem I had with the medication. I said, can you just, I was rushing, I, was, I, I, had, to, I had to leave or something. So I needed it right away. I said, as soon as you approve it, can you send it to, directly to the Customs? Because they're, they're working together, Customs and, you know, no, we cannot. We cannot send it directly there. We have to only send it to you. I said, what the heck? So they sent it, sent it to me, and then I have to send the same PDF to the customs people. And you know what happened with the medication? The customs people couldn't read PDFs. They said, can you send it as a, I think it was a Word file. I said, I got the PDF from your other medical unit. That's from them. So I had to write them and said, can you send it to me in a word form? And they wrote, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, we only can send it in PDF. So they're saying they can only send it in PDF. The customs people are saying, we cannot read PDF, so please send it in Word. And I'm saying, you guys work together. Can't you guys just figure it out? No, they couldn't. So I had to take the PDF. I had to go, to, I think it was to the uh, convenience store, and I had to have it printed. <laughs> and then scanned and then sent it to the um, Osaka Customs. It was insane. Now this is between two government in organizations, uh, offices that work together. There's Customs and there's this thing place called Kiyakuchi, which means something like the medical testing unit that they check everything that comes through that deals with medical things. But they do not coordinate together. They do not send documents to each other. It has to come to me and then I sent to them. But one comes in PDF, one cannot read PDF. I know, it's, it's like unbelievable. So that was before when I was dealing with the medication. So that is the story about how the coronavirus did not allow me to go to the United States and thus I had to have my needed medication and CPAP nose pad shipped to me here in Japan, which would then trigger off this entire ordeal with customs and the section of medicinal inspection and guidance. If you like the star and video, please hit that like button and subscribe. You want to avoid Japanese customs as much as possible because I'm sure maybe American customs is pretty tough too, but um, Japan customs, you know, it's by the rules. There's no like flexibility, you know, you know, things like headbands, probably some medical device, you know, or paper and uh, sponge filters. Oh, that could be like a dangerous weapon or something, you know. I don't know. <laughs> it makes me a little bit crazy, but yeah, not my country, so I really don't have much say. Uh, I just thought I would share with you as this would be my today's little vent and rant. And I'm glad I got it, but it was all because of the coronavirus and not going home. So anyway, thanks for listening, and um, I shall be happy CPAPing tonight with the new one, hopefully. Catch you on the backside. I'm smiling now. <laughs>